Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 135th scale German E100 Super Heavy Tank. The following model that you see here was built for commission by a private collector. As I said in a previous video that I, from time to time I take on commission builds from model tanks ranging from 135th scale as well as up to 1 6th scale for pricing information and timeline as well as availability that information would be best by contacting me direct through eastcoastarmory.com a quick walk around the model The model itself is built from the Trumpeteer 135th scale E100 kit. The kit itself is nicely done out of the box and builds very easily. This model itself did receive several upgrades, which I will go over in this video. The model itself has undergone some changes from the original kit, which we will discuss in this video. The gun itself was intended for the Sturher Emil tank destroyer and was requested by the client to be rearmed, be used to rearm the E100 that you see here. To mount the Sturher Emil gun barrel to the Trumpeteer E100 <clears throat> required the fabrication of an adapter plug. The adapter plug replaces the plastic adapter plug that would originally be used to mount the kit's 120 millimeter gun to the mantlet. That adapter plug would be hidden underneath this mantlet here. <clears throat> The Sturger Mule's barrel ends right at this point here. A new piece was fabricated out of turned aluminum bar stock and it was adapted so that the RB model would plug into the aluminum and then the aluminum extender would then mount to the kit's own 120 millimeter gun interior detailing. The gun does elevate and go up and down. One addition that needed to be made to this model was that since the new barrel was very heavy, it was a lot heavier than the kit plastic barrel, a counterweight spring was added on the interior portion of the turret. This spring keeps the, prevents the gun from drooping and lets you retain the gun's functional elevation and depress. Another thing that's unique about this vehicle is the way that the model is painted. The model's pattern is not that of your standard ambush pattern. The model's pattern is somewhat of a hybrid camouflage pattern in that it has the dot ambush only on the green and on the yellow it has the late war style octopus or bubble style pattern. To, in, to make things a little bit more interesting if we notice that the gun barrel itself is left in its primer red color. This was common amongst German vehicles towards the end of the war. The barrels would be replaced or would be damaged. Once replaced, either one from a, a salvaged vehicle or one that was kept in storage, a this is at the end of the war. Keep in mind that they didn't have a whole lot of time to put a paint pattern on it. So they just threw it on, still mint, with its factory red oxide primer and fit it on a gun muzzle, either again from another salvaged vehicle or one that was on on hand. If we notice that the muzzle, one thing that's unique about this model is that the muzzle still has its camouflage pattern on it. This feature breaks up the, the model's paint pattern in that you have you know, all this camouflage going on over here with the main body and the turret. Then you have the red barrel which gives your eye a little bit of rest and then it's capped off with the octopus up gun muzzle. Another modification that was made to the vehicle was the way the turret mounts to the lower hull. The trumpeteer kit is designed that the turret has no locking system for mounting the top for mounting the turret to the lower hull. It's actually just designed to just sit there, either to be glued in place or just to have gravity just holding on to the vehicle. 
I never really liked that system. So on this model, I went ahead and redesigned the locking system to that of more of a traditional plastic model. To make the locking system, I modified the hull but by carving out two small notches with a needle file. And on the underside of the turret, I added two plastruct angles. These angles act like the turret locking tabs that you see on pretty much most common on 135th scale in any armor modeling kit. Also, as of note, here's, we have the shot of the interior. Here's the basic gun breech detail. Now, since this model has closed hatches, there was no point on super detailing the interior. And it also gave me a place to anchor the tank's counterweight spring. That spring there, as was mentioned earlier, is what prevents the gun barrel from drooping. With the tabs engaged, the turret will spin freely and smoothly and will not be able to fall off the tank's hull. Another modification to the tank that was made was the way the tank's night infrared scope mounts to the copula. The kit wants you to keep the copula commander hatch open and mount the infrared scope on the inside of the copula. However, since the model is going to be uh, built with the hatches closed, I decided to change the way the, the IR scope mounts. Rather than mounting it on the inside of the copula, I fabricated the missing machine gun ring that we see here. On Panthers and on Tiger IIs, the copula had a machine gun ring mounted to it so that the tank's uh, MG34T would be able to swivel and change its arc of rotation. On Panthers and Tiger IIs fitted with the IR scope, the IR scope would be fitted to this machine gun ring. So it was only natural to fabricate the ring out of brass to mount the kit supplied IR scope to it. The kit supplied IR scope is very detailed and does the job very well. On the model's rear engine deck, we have photo wedge grill covers. These photo wedge grill covers actually come with the model, which is standard uh, not just for the Trumpeteer E100, but also with the Trumpeteer Jagged E100, uh, the Crocodile. As of note, we can also see that the tank's blackout light is painted in blue, which would be the case on the tubular blackout light on these later war German vehicles. Another feature that I built into this model is that the spare turret track links are not permanently glued to the turret. They are only fitted to the tank's track racks that come with the kit. I did this in case the owner wanted to shift around the spare track links to better suit his own needs. The links just simply drop in and lock, and lock on. With the client's model, he also requested to have ammunition made that would accompany his piece. The ammunition here is chambered for the Sturher Emil, and since th this is also because the tank has been rearmed with the Sturher Emil's main gun. The shells that you see here are from the aftermarket manufacturer Aber. The rounds themselves are all made out of real metal. The shells are turned brass, and the Actual warheads or projectiles themselves are made out of CNC and aluminum. While I was working on the client's model, I had the same kit in my stash. So while working on it, I decided to build one for myself as well. My model here is the same trumpeteer kit as the one that was built for private commission and received the same modification in regards to the turret clamps. However, this model is purely built out of the box. This here is the kit supplied 120mm gun. I wanted to have a similar pattern which was on the model's box art. The only difference is that on my model I wanted to continue the octopus or bubble pattern throughout the whole vehicle as opposed to just having it stop at the turret which was recommended on the instruction sheet. There's a quick walk around.
In addition to the the turret locking system, this model also received the same modification to the tank's copula that was discussed on the other vehicle. And that concludes this model showcase video for these two 135th scale German E100 Super Heavy tanks. For more information on 135th scale tanks that I currently have available or to see 1 6th scale tanks and 1 6th scale vehicle accessories and detail components, don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com. Thank you.